I'm Russ Kickle and welcome to another episode of American Reef. Before I head on over to Mike Paletta's and check out that Elos tank, I've been getting a lot of questions on the HPD pellets. The first question has been, what kind of sizes does it come in or do they come in? Specifically, they come in three millimeter, five millimeter. Uh, no other sizes, nothing smaller, nothing larger. And um, if you go actually to the store itself, which means you go to AmericanReef.com, in the top left hand corner you'll see basically a navigation link. Click store and I believe it's the third item down. You'll see where I have a picture where you can actually purchase them and you'll see the picture. I compare them to a quarter so it'll give you a visual representation of what three millimeter and five millimeter looks like. Um, again, as a kind of reference point, three millimeter is about an eighth of an inch, I believe. Um, so again, when you look at it, the, the reason for the sizes, some of the viewers, for example, have uh, larger fish, larger triggers, angels, etc. And they wanted a, a food, for example, that they didn't want to pollute the water column, so to speak, um, with a ton of food. Uh, they wanted, you know, larger pellets, so to speak, so that's the idea here. Well, they'll throw fewer, larger pellets, and then the fish will eat them and, and so forth. And so when you look at it again, three sizes, or excuse me, two sizes, a three millimeter, five millimeter. The second question that I get is where do they fit or where do they kind of float in the water column? Meaning do they sink to the bottom or do they float at the very top? And um, in these cases, neither actually, they float in the middle. The idea is for these things to stay in suspension until basically the fish eat them. Because I didn't want the food to be basically sitting on the bottom, get being blown behind rock work and not eaten. Or the opposite meaning staying on the top and being blown over into a, uh, an overflow and again, again, not being eaten. Because for me, I didn't want to have to kill the power in my system um, to feed the, uh, the pellets. And so those are the two main questions, again, where you can get them. The same place where you get uh, the HPD itself. Just go to AmericanReef.com, top left-hand corner, click the link called Store, and uh, from there you can kind of, again, purchase whatever products. I also created a direct link, AmericanReefHPD.com, which will get you directly to the store. Now let's talk about that Paletta tank. Again, this is that Paletta ELO system. It's about 15 months. And those of you who have communicated with me know that Mike has gone through some ups and downs with this tank. And luckily we get to spend a good half an hour talking with Mike about what those ups and downs were and kind of how frustrating it was for Mike and kind of what he believes was what was wrong with the tank and how he kind of overcame those issues. And uh, again, rather than talk about it, let's go check out that tank and let's see what it looks like today, 15 months later. back and reviewing the Elos tank, the changes I've made, and what has happened to bring it from basically a bad, really bad, awful tank long term to something that's starting to look like something I want to have in my house. <laughs> the tank itself has been beautiful all along. The rest of the stuff, mm, not so much. <laughs> not so much. Well, okay, so as we, as we start this, how many months have passed? It's now roughly 15 months, okay. which is, it's basically still a tank in its infancy in my mind. Right. And because it took a year to get it really started again, it's really three months old in my mind. So this is a three month old tank. So <laughs> you throw out all the old videos right, right, actually. Right, right, right. But it, it's coming along now. I'm seeing the kind of things I wanna see. And I've made the changes for, and went back to basically doing what I do. Right, okay, so it was interesting enough because I would stop over like we'll say every three-ish, four-ish months and we would tape something and we'd go, man, it's not, Taking. It just wouldn't right. do it, 
And what saved me more than anything is talking to the folks in Europe, talking to Sanjay, and finding out we both had, were having the same issues with our tanks. That is, nothing was thriving. It would stay there, it would be okay. It didn't die overnight, but two weeks, three weeks, four weeks in, all of a sudden it would start to fade and then, and it would never encrust, it would not do anything. And all the parameters showed everything was fine and we could not figure out what we were doing. So in talking with Sanjay and talking with my friends in Europe, we all decided that the one thing that we all had in common is we started with completely dead rock. Now I know there's people that have been out there and successful with completely dead rock. I'm not one of them. I also did a lot of other things that I don't normally do. I went with the Triton method with no water changes. I was trying a new light source. Uh, I was trying new reactors on the tank. I was trying a new skimmer on the tank. I didn't use any miracle mud. I did all the things that I don't know will work or not, thinking, okay, this was going to make it simpler, no water changes using the Triton method. It was no mud in the bottom, so I wouldn't have to deal with that at all. The new lights look nice. The corals seem to show nice colors. In right. reality, in you know theory, everything was fine, right. but in reality, it was bad. Right, and so just to kind of recap, again, everything new, meaning you didn't use any the equipment, for example, that you used before. Right. You didn't use any of the filtration that you used before. I didn't and use anything, nothing, every, everything was brand new on this tank, right. I, in terms of my ever using it. <laughs> Methodologies, equipment, uh, the only thing that was right. old were the fish that came from the other tank. Right, right. I mean, the rock was different. Everything right. was different. Even the salt, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, even the salt. <laughs> Which, you know, everybody loves that salt. I, for whatever reason. Right. So I have since, uh, probably starting in March. Right. March, what I did was I took out a lot of the dead rock mm -hmm. and I replaced it with live rock. In addition, I took a lot of rock that I have in a cryptic zone downstairs in the basement that is full of sponges, and I put that sponge rock in here. And when you say cryptic zone, you mean in your big tank? In, in the big, big tank, tank, behind the other rocks, underneath stuff, in the sump, places right. where it was basically hidden from everything else, and the sponges were thriving in that rock. So I kept the sponges underwater, didn't let them expose to air, put them in this tank, let them go for a month, made sure they were doing fine, but when I say doing fine, I mean they were growing over the rocks like they were downstairs. So they didn't turn white, they didn't die. So I knew changing the rock, doing that. I also added some uh, uh, bacteria to the tank as well. I added as much of the BioDigest and the other products I could possibly find. Added all of that in addition with a live rock. I added Miracle Mud, half fresh, half from downstairs. Uh, I put everything in that I knew would... would bring up the life and everything else in the tank. Right. Oh, okay, so so you put Miracle Mud in. Right. right. And then it looks like you also changed your lights. Right. <laughs> so you, you put in rock from your old tanks, half of it. Changed. Well, I, I, I brought in fresh live rock that I cured, okay. as well as sponge rock from downstairs. Okay, so half. So sponges. I did both. Okay, there you go. Yep. And then you put your lights in, in other words, you went back to the Radeons. Right. I went back to the Radeon Generation 4s, which I think with well, this setup looks really nice on this Yeah, thing. yeah, very much so, right? Yep. And then what about like uh, as far as you had a sump? There, I, I, I went back to an octopus skimmer. Okay. I was using a Deltec. It wasn't seemingly taking out as much as the, as the octopus is. Mm -hmm. uh, I also went uh, back to a full bed of Calerpa. I wasn't doing the Ch uh, Kato anymore. Uh, what else did I do? I've still been doing the nano bubbles in the tank. Mm -hmm. um, and what else? And I went to a vertex reactor instead of the reactors that I was using. And so I'm getting more thro flow through with GFO and carbon in that reactor than I was before. Okay, so so I, I, I have the GFO. GFO, I have a vertex reactor downstairs. I have a vertex reactor now on this tank. And then as far as the Triton chemicals, you're not using the Triton, chem excuse me, Triton chemicals anymore. I'm, the, I'm doing water changes as well. Okay. I'm doing a 15% water change in this tank. It's around 100 gallons. I do 15 gallons the first of the month every mm -hmm. month. And now uh, what are you doing for calcium kind of replacement? That's what else I switched from where I was dosing with the Triton stuff. Mm -hmm. Now I've gone to uh, Bulk Reef Supply hey. <laughs> or uh, Bob's, uh, Rob Stark stuff. Okay. The ESV? Is ESV. That okay. So I've been playing with both of those, yep. seeing if I see a difference. I haven't seen a whole lot of difference. Mm -hmm. 
So both of them are good. I just had some ESV here. Sure. That's why I used it. Yeah, yeah. Now I bought some bulk resupply. Now I'm using it. Yep. Haven't seen a whole lot of difference. When I say a whole lot of difference, in the old tank, nothing would encrust. Right. Right. Nothing was growing or encrusting. It would sit there. It would be colorful. It would look okay, but it never grew on anything. Hey, now, what, what kind of coral? Let's be specific about it. Nothing would encrust. It didn't matter. It didn't okay, matter. So you were trying Montes. I know you tried some Montes. Montes and Acros, Postoloporas, Seriatoporas, mm -hmm. uh, Styloforas. Okay. Nothing thrived in that tank. Did you try any softies or no? No. I, I, yeah, I have the one green leather in here that's okay. closed up now. Okay. It's a bright green polyp leather. Okay. The anemones have done fine. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the LPS were doing okay, but they weren't really right. thriving right. until I made all these changes. Okay. Since I've gone to these changes, the first thing I did, well, not the first thing, but after a month, I put in a couple Montes that grow like weeds. Mm -hmm. uh, basically stuck them on the rocks, because those were the things I used to test before, and they lived for a month, and then they died. Mm -hmm. And they never encrusted. In this case, after two, two and a half weeks, I started to see them encrusting down. After a month, they've encrusted on the rocks. Right. After three months, they've now become pests. I actually have to chip them off the rocks, because there's better, nicer stuff I want to put in this tank, because this is going to be a showcase right. tank. Yeah, right. So in that regard, it changed in terms of things encrusting, encrusting fast. Uh, Fish-wise, I haven't kept a high fish load like I typically do, but that's fine. And just to get back onto the hardware for a second, you were using the Ecotech Vortec, right? As far as for the circulation? Did I'm still, you know? I added two of those. I still have two of those. I may move one around. I may move the bottom one over and put it in the bottom back and have it blow front to back. Mm -hmm. And I may move the one that's at the top now either over or up and get more circulation that way. Because right now it's just blowing on the rocks and I can't grow anything on the rocks there. Got it. So I may move things around a little bit. Sure. But nothing dramatic. Sure. I mean, I, I think I have fairly good current in here. And now what I'm doing is I'm cleaning the uh, filter on the uh, Vortex once a week. Got it. Got it. Because it really accumulates a lot of dirt really fast. I mean, it's as good as any you know, right. mechanical filter. Right, right. And so now we got a three month old tank, really, is what you're talking about. Yeah, in my mind, it's three months old. It has micro colony or uh, frags and small maricultured colonies. And what I've been doing is I've been taking the maricultured colonies once they start doing well down here and move them downstairs and put more quote unquote named and high end frags in here. Because right. this is, for me, this is going to be the show case tank even more than the 300 because right, I'm always here everybody sees us when they walk in the door this is where I want the rare stuff because I can always watch it I see it right. every day I know if there's a problem or not and it's a beautiful tank. yeah I mean the, the Elos tank is the, the nicest piece of furniture in my house right. it is I mean it's sad to say but <laughs> it's so well built it looks nice the lines are good right and when you walk through the front door what's the first thing you see yeah, yeah, yeah. you see the blue light in the tanks <laughs> okay so um, with at least this tank for the 12 months, right, that you were kind of, we'll say, experimenting through this. Right. Um, it, you, you said that things would kind of start and stop, basically, right? They wouldn't, they wouldn't even start. They would just okay. sit there. Mm -hmm. I never saw a whole lot of polyp extension. Mm -hmm. I never saw the vibrancy right. that I have seen since I've changed everything over or that I've seen downstairs in the main tank or in the frag tank or in the nano tank right. or even in the sunlight tank. Sure, sure. The only, the only corals that actually showed polyp extension was a leather coral, which is funny because it's closed today. Right. But now the polyps are out on just about everything. Did you think, man, should I should just try, wait a little bit and try it again? I just thought, okay, it takes a while for this to mature. Okay. I'll give it another three months. Okay. So every month or two, I would add another Monty frag or two, think it was doing okay, right. and then it would just slowly fizzle out. Okay. 
I mean, the I've added, there's six anemones in here. Those have done great. Right. So you would think, okay, if the water quality was an issue, the anemones would die. Sure, sure. So it made no sense. And when you looked at calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, potassium, those levels were fine. Mm -hmm. And when I sent the test kits in for, for Triton, right. nothing was off. I mean, which is interesting because in all the other tanks where I use Instant Ocean, right. the lithium levels are through the roof. Mm -hmm. Here, where I didn't use it, they were perfect. Right. I mean, according to Triton and according to the, my own testing, the water parameters were perfect, but no SPS corals would live. And so, okay, so when you started talking to the guys over in Europe, that was about the six-month mark? Or that was about the six-month mark. Okay. And we got to discussing problems, and my friends from Germany and Italy had both tried totally dead rock, and had seen the same kind of thing. And they said, it will work, but it'll take you 18 months to two years for that tank to be stable enough for SPS. Most people that start with dead rock are starting with soft corals or LPS or zoos and feeding them and getting the nutrients in that way. Because I was starting with frags and not any rock that was actually adding anything bacterially or microfauna or any otherwise, I was starting from scratch. Right, right. And that this SPS corals, for whatever reason... In my own opinion, SPS corals do better when you see sponges thriving. Mm -hmm. Whether they're eating what the sponges are sloughing off or the sponges are a good indicator that the water quality is good or whatever. Sure. In my own opinion, when I've had sponges thriving, I've had corals thriving. Right. When I've had sponges dying, I know there's an issue. Right. So in this tank, there were no sponges. When After a year of, with dead rock and nothing else, there were no sponges. Right. I mean, you could pull up any rock, there were no sponges oh, anywhere. Yeah. So I took a bunch of sponge rock from downstairs with all kind of different sponges, right. put it in here, and let it go to town for three months. At the same time, changing out the rock. So that was what shifted things over. Got it. And that, so that, that happened about nine-month mark? That like yeah, that happened around the first of the year. Okay. I switched everything over because this tank, I had cyano outbreaks. I had dinoflagellate right. outbreaks. No matter what I did, I had some kind of outbreak. Of some kind of algae, but I still couldn't get any corals <laughs> to live. I've had algae outbreaks in other tanks, but the corals seemed to do okay. Right, Here, right. it didn't matter. Got it. Okay, so then first of the year that happens, and then you put in another Monty or whatever, and it starts to crush. I put in two Montes, okay. different kinds, uh -huh. different heights. Right. Okay, thinking, okay, we'll see the lights. Sure. I put it on the same. Uh, the growth no, this is, this is kind of a different one because I've, I've shifted from the radiant light a little bit okay. and I've utilized some of what Sanjay does and some of what the Europeans do. Okay. In that, what I do, I'm now running zigzag patterns on all my tanks, which is what Stuart Bertram runs and what David Saxby runs. That is, the lights slowly ramp up from 10 o'clock until like noon. Mm -hmm. Then at around noon, they hit their peak, they go max white, then they go down 30%. To max radiant color. Mm -hmm. Then they shoot back up to everything at 100% and go back down, go back up, go back down, and they do this over the course of eight hours. And how long do they stay at their max? For an hour. Okay, an hour, got it. Yeah. So it's max for an hour, down for an hour? Max, max for an, an hour, hour, down, down for, for an hour. hour. Yeah. Okay. And when you say down, how down? Down like 20, 30% in got the it. maximum radiant blue. Okay, got it. So the, the tank gets bluer. And the corals seem to be liking that system because, I, I mean, I saw it in the tanks in England, uh -huh. and they were doing really well. It seems to give the corals a respite for being bombarded. Sure. So and, and what uh, Dana Riddle has written is that six hours of max light is about the most that the corals can take. Mm -hmm. So here they're getting about five hours of max light, but then they're getting five, four or five hours of max radiant color. So it's bringing out the color, and I'm getting the good growth. Sure, sure. And now um, as far as the, the blues, when you you know, when it's down in that rest period, for example. On that last blue rest period, do you keep it there through the night? Like, you know, so, with, so when you... No, by, before, it, uh, by midnight, it's just on the moonlight pattern. Okay, okay. It, it starts at uh, 10 in the morning, it runs till 10 at night, the whole pattern, and then at 10 at night till midnight, it really goes down to nothing, and overnight, it just follows the moonlight pattern. Got it. And now, when did you actually add the lights? Was that, like, around that January time? No, the, the lights... Were changed in May. Okay, so relatively recent. Yeah, three months, early May, late April, okay. somewhere in there. So you saw the changes come around when you started with again the sponge. No, I, I saw that the changes coming with the other lights. Okay. But 
because I'm switching corals from downstairs to upstairs, I didn't want to be shocking things, moving things around, because I knew that's what I was going to do. Right. So I got the radions. And these new generation fours, seeing what they're doing downstairs, seeing what they're doing here, and seeing what they're doing on Sanjay's tank, right. are light years ahead of the generation threes right. in terms of getting maximum optimal coloration of the corals and getting maximum growth as well. Right. Right. So in my mind, this is the ticket. Right. I can't see how they're going to make them any better than this. I can't <laughs> see the fifth generation being significantly better. Although if they tend to do that, right? Yeah, but I, I just don't see it. Right, right. I, I mean, unless they have new, you know, lower wattage ones that produce more light, sure. that's the only way it's going to make it better because then you're going to be using less electricity. Sure. Yeah, and they may do that because they do suck some wattage, right? It's yeah. Not like they're, you know. No, it's not like, it's not like they're, you know, an LED light bulb that you've replaced a 100 watt bulb with a 15 watt right. bulb and get as much light. I'm, I am using less electricity than I used to. Right. I mean, my electric bills are down $30, dollars right. now that I'm on all LEDs and not having to cool the, the downstairs to the degree I used to, but right. it's still... Yeah, it's still sucking water. Yeah, I'm still, I still have a nice power bill. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, with six tanks, yeah, the electric maybe, company well, knows. Maybe a 7 uh, 500 if you do your 500. If I do the 500, the 300 will be gone, so it'll be a 500, but I will also take out the frag tank and the nano tank. So just so you know, you know, if you do that 500, you can swap out the sunlit tank instead of doing the 110, put the 300 for the 110. No, because then i got to rebuild the floor in the sunroom <laughs> to hold I, the... I can the, do that. I can do the floor for you. So I'm just saying. No, we're not hauling that 300 <laughs> upstairs. The 300 had stayed down on that floor. i got to find guys to haul it out again. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put a dot, dot, dot to be continued on the bottom. Of yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> okay, so back to this tank here. So, again, three months into it, into what you consider finally got it figured out. Right. Right. Now, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm also now feeding it or adding things to it as well. Still adding strontium. That's why I'm getting more coral and algae growing now. I'm adding iodine on a small amount, three or four times a week. And what do you think iodine does to it? I'm just going by what Stuart Bertram noted, is that when he adds it, he doesn't get bleaching from the bottom. When I add it, I don't get bleaching from the bottom. So whatever it kills, which is probably bacteria at the base of the corals, mm -hmm. I don't have the issues with it that I was having. Okay. So adding it two or three times a week is not a big deal. It's all constantly dosed acro plot power. The, the dosing pump I'm using is dosing four things, uh, elk, calcium, magnesium, and acro power every day. And it's staying, my, uh, my uh, alkalinity is around 8.6, 8.7. So I'm quite happy with that. And, okay, so strontium, iodine, anything else? Strontium, iodine, magnesium, acro power. Okay, what is acro power? It's uh, Julian Sprung's uh, Two Little Fishes nutrient for corals. Okay, so it's another... Whatever. It's another additive. Okay. I'm also using uh, Vertex's Acro Glow. I don't know if it's Vertex, but I got it from Vertex. Mm -hmm. It's a, a, a another nutrient for corals and sponges to add. Okay. That seems to be bringing sure. out the colors and things. Okay. Uh, I'm getting some nice, interesting corals from uh, Pirates Reef in Florida, from uh, Morgan in Florida at Reef Gardener. From Julian and Cruz at Elegant Corals, uh, some corals from uh, the Coral Kings. So, and I'm, I don't want to forget anybody. Uh, Joe at Unique Coral sent me some nice corals. Uh, I'm adding a lot of quote unquote. Uh, Brandon uh, Pierce is sending me some awesome corals. And uh, one other guy, Rudy of Batar, is sending me some nice corals. So, there will be some amazing frags oh, yeah. in here growing out. So right now, the, the colors are nice. What else is interesting is the pro pro one of the problems we had in the past with the, with the Generation 3 lights is we weren't getting millipore, acropore, millipores to grow, and spathulatas just pff, faded and did nothing. I now have spathulatas keeping their color after three months and starting to encrust, and I have millipores starting to grow out. And Sanjay's seen the same thing. I mean, he had a couple of millipores in his tank for two years under the Generation 3s that did virtually nothing. And now he has them growing like weeds in his tank. Right. So he's, you know, going, I got to take these out. So, right, right. Yeah, and over here is an interesting coral hanging off the side, on, not on getting, the, getting blasted with light. Mm -hmm. It's a green uh, Seriatopora hystrix that's made its way here from England when I was there. <laughs> and the reason I brought it, you know, why are you bringing a green Seriatopora? Because in the tank it was in there, it was also not getting a lot of light. It actually was turquoise in color. 
So I'm starting to see the blue turquoise a little bit here. Mm -hmm. It's not as pronounced as it was there, but this is gonna could be a potentially a really oh, yeah. prime coral if it turns the turquoise color. <laughs> so we'll keep our eye on that one as well. Yeah. <laughs> but so far everything is is doing well. Uh, like down in the front here is the famous purple monster, the true purple monster that uh, Jake Adams brought back from the Solomon Islands. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe has it at Unique Corals. He said it's not growing. In this tank, I'm actually starting to see it growing in crust, and I'm absolutely shocked by that because it grows incredibly slowly, yeah. So I'm starting to see good things with that. Uh, above that is a uh, cultivated goniopora that has been in the hobby from Aquatic Arts in Denver. My friend Chris sent it to me. He's been cultivating it for the last 16 years. He has like a uh, square 18 inch like colony of it. <laughs> yeah, it, it fills up like a, right. a, in a 500 gallon tank, it fills up a large portion. It's like a basketball. Uh -huh. And he got me a portion, and this has pretty much doubled in size in, in the two months I've had it. Really? So it's growing really well. He also sent me a Skittles goniopora. There's a purple goniopora up here. The only thing I do with them is I squirt a little bit of Julian's Goniopora food on them a couple okay. times a week. Uh, when I shut the power off, I feed them, uh -huh. and that seems to keep them happy. And the tank's filling in nicely. I mean, there's still some empty spots, but mm -hmm. when you fill it in with frags, and, and typically what I'm doing is I'm putting the frags in and I'm taking the maricultured colonies out because right. the frags potentially are going to grow into something much better. Right, so. right, right. Yeah, good deal. And so... Uh, you figure at least now you've got a foundation of what you kind of want and so it'll be interesting to see how it kind of develops. In the yeah, process. it'll not be nice to see how it grows, how it fills in yeah. and how much stuff I got to take out and put yeah, downstairs right. to put up here and that's probably what's going to convince me to put the 500 up. Yes, and then move the 300 up here. No, no. 300 is not <laughs> moving up here. <laughs> well, good deal. So what we'll do is we'll come back on this one. Again, we'll give it another six months or whatever. And yeah, then, by Christmas time, I think yeah. this will be filled in a lot. Yeah. And okay. there should be some crazy corals in here by then. Right, right. I mean, there's some nice ones now, but some really crazy ones by then. There will also be more fish. I have fish downstairs that are going in here. These uh, basically nine fish in here. Anything new is they've beaten the crap out of, particularly the peppermint hog. So I have fish downstairs that have been acclimating for two months. They're going to go in here. They're going to be in a plastic box probably for at least six yeah, weeks. Yeah, yeah. Get him used to them. Because there's a pair of uh, mystery wrasses downstairs. There's a uh, rubra squamous wrasse downstairs. There's a couple other nice fairy wrasses downstairs. And they're all nice wrasses. Yeah, so they're going to go up here. And, I mean, he's killed them in the past. I mean, but that is uh, uh, my favorite fish. So, But hopefully he won't kill her. There's also a trio of Japanese swallowtail angelfish down there. Uh, I got three females. One is just starting to convert to a male. Once she turns into a male... Then I'll have a nice trio to put up here. So there will be some interesting fish going in this tank. Stay tuned, huh? Yep. <laughs> Always something going on in my tanks. Good deal. Well, thanks for the time today, Michael. Thank you. Mm -hmm.